Welcome to the Wisdom of Jacob's Ladder. Thank you for joining my channel. Uh, for those of you who are new to my channel, we love having you here. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as bell notification icon to stay up to date to, to interviews coming your way each and every week. But let's right, get right to it. Uh, today's guest is Dr. Janelle Kim, author of Myung Sung. Janelle is a wonderful you know, healer. You know, she's a doctorate in Eastern medicine and she really shares a lot of different uh, similar you know, things that are on my channel, um, but she adds her own unique twist to it, you know, with mind and the body. And she also comes from nine lineages of healers and herbologists. So she's really going to give all tools from her toolbox today for you know, us listeners. So you're going to really love this interview and it's spirituality with practicality and it's a lot of different information and tools that I know you'll be able to receive uh, to really move the needle of your life. So without further ado, we welcome Dr. Janelle Kim on the Wisdom of Jacob's Ladder. Dr. Janelle Kim, welcome to the Wisdom of Jacob's Ladder. It's a real honor to have you here uh, as my guest. Uh, I've been a fan and follower of your work for quite some time, and I know our viewers are going to see this as an interview, but it also will be a bit of a conversation because our works mm -hmm. really um, you know, synergize, but you bring so much to the table. Uh, but tell the audience members a little bit about your work and your background, because it is extensive. It goes back, I believe, nine generations, you know, as a healer and herbologist, and uh, you just come from such a lineage, and I'm sure mm -hmm. you make, you know, so many people that came before you incredibly proud of the work that oh, you're yeah. doing uh, to this day. But share a little bit about yourself and your background for my viewers. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. I'm honored to be here. And yes, it is, I'm really looking forward to our conversation because I know how much we align. Yes, I am a ninth generation in my lineage. My name is Dr. Janelle Kim, and I come from a long lineage in from Korea. I will get there in a second, but interestingly, my father was Korean. My mother is American. So that in and of itself, even to this day, is not totally common. That's the truth. But kind of sticking to my lineage here for a second, because that is certainly what I connect to, what I have chosen, because I do believe that we all have a choice in this life, no matter what we are born into, what we are given going all the way down to every circumstance that we find ourselves in. But I chose to stay on in this lineage. I chose to commit myself, which to me is a very important word, to sharing all that I can that has been passed down for, for centuries. And it's been from generation to generation and something that is very special to me that I have found people resonate with, man, woman alike, is that I am the first woman in my lineage and the first to ever share these principles that I will briefly discuss in just a moment here with the world in such a, such a large way, in such a public way, if you will. And so what has been passed down in my lineage is medicine, movement, and meditation. And you know, it's a lot for especially Western culture to, to understand. I, I know that upon saying this, most people are very interested, even, even in the beginning, because we're all human and those things just resonate with us by nature of being human. But I have come to find that the best way that I can explain why these pillars, why it's been handed down for so long, I always say, and my mentor taught me, that something lasts because it works. I mean, that's the bottom line, right? And I'm, I can be very practical when it comes to those things. But I call these pillars, actually, it's all medicine. And I have found actually in the last year that that is my favorite way of saying it because it just completely, to me and to many people I share that with, just makes sense right away. It's all medicine. And it, we have to open our mind and expand ourselves a bit because especially in Western culture, it's hard to think, wait, wait a second, med meditation is medicine or, or movement is medicine. And the truth is it is the best medicine for our body. And of course, the third pillar or the first, whichever order of medicine is something that I've devoted the last 20 years plus. And long story short, it's herbal formulas, understanding of herbal medicine, plant medicine, and understanding of that formulation. That's what I've devoted my life for the last 20 years. I have a manufacturing lab and mm -hmm. we manufacture products for brands carried all over the world in your high-end spas, resorts, retailers, but it's all based on that herbal medicine. And I'm grateful because we have really been at the forefront for the last 20 years of herbal formulation, integration of East and West and the beauty and wellness aspect. So, and now about a year and a half ago, 
I launched my book, Myung Sung, The Korean Art of Living Meditation with Penguin Random House and Watkins. And that kind of started this whole other opportunity to share the movement and the meditation. So I'm sure we're going to get into that. So I'll A lot. Kind of step there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, what I love about you and your work is not only, as you mentioned, you're a pioneer within a pioneering uh, mm -hmm. you know, viewpoint, but you're an incredible go-getter. Like you just, you know, really <laughs> have a true calling um, and don't stop. And I'm sure so many people benefit from that. But I think our work mm -hmm. parallels in a sense that, you know, those, my viewers know I had an NDE. And when you have a near-death experience, yes. um, it's hard because there's a whole cultural myth that comes to you and kind of tells you to forget who you are, to accept what is. Yes. And for a certain time, I had to push that, you know, beach ball down, but eventually was meant to come up to the surface. Yes. And from sitting back and hearing you speak, it seems like you've been able to do that too. Like in the Western world, I'm sure they tell mm -hmm. you to ignore your yes. roots and your heritage. And for you, you're like, no, this is a part of myself, my roots. And I believe that it's important to merge the East and the West. I have a yes. question because I certainly am a believer of Western medicine, but I, yes. I think it has limitations. And certainly I don't want my interviews to make people think that that's not significant, but how would you, you know, for viewers interested in Eastern medicines, like how would you differentiate the two? Could East and West possibly coexist? Like where's the emergence of the two and how are the two different in their origins? Would you say? Would you say? Yes, I really appreciate that question. And sometimes my answer is surprising to some because I think that people would assume or would like to believe in some cases that I'm very strong one way, right? And and that's actually against everything that I teach and that I and that I connect to in the sense that there's always a balance. You know, everything I talk about, and this is a much longer conversation, is the understanding of the Tao, which is the universe. Right. And so whatever that means to us, but it's something greater than us. When I speak of the Tao, the universe, I do connect to the East Asian kind of philosophy of it all, but it's all for all humans. And that goes back to first there was the Tao and then there was yin and yang. So it's an interesting way of, of answering your question, I know, and I will get there in just a second. But ultimately that very principle of the yin and the yang, the day and the night, the feminine, the masculine, the loud, the soft, that duality, that, dichot that dichotomy is always present in our life, no matter where we look from nature and the universe around us. And it mm. absolutely goes into our body too. Right. And so I think that that's an important piece. So, on that note, even when it comes to understanding of Eastern and Western medicine, the West, the East, the old, the new, it's that same duality, that same dichotomy. Mm -hmm. And they're always connected and they always have to be balanced. And that is why, as much as I have chosen a life of sharing East Asian medicine, philosophy, movement, ultimately, I can also be a huge proponent of Western because there is so much that it can give us in the modern medicine. The understanding, for example, of antibiotics. I always love this example. When we need antibiotics, of course, there's other forms of medicine out there. But when there's really a time that antibiotics are very helpful for us, why would you not have that option? You know, it's a very very simplistic and, and specific way of looking at it, but you shouldn't cut anything off. And so really what I, to, to say, to answer your question very directly now, I am all about that integration. Do I believe that it's going to come and be be present in our lives 100%? In fact, I'm seeing it now more than ever in the 40 some years that I have been on this earth. And I think it's vital because at the end of the day, what I teach is make ourselves as educated and aware first of our own selves, mind, body, spirit. We have to be aware of ourselves because then when we go out to find the experts, the doctors, the people who can guide us in certain expertise, if you will, in, in the medical system, anywhere really, then we first can stand on our own ground and know when to do, when not to do. And I think that's what it comes down to when it comes to Western, Eastern. And so one more thing that I think will be helpful in understanding is that Western medicine, and I think it's a pretty well-known understanding or concept, if you will, is very good for that diagnosis, that emergency type treatment, right? Mm -hmm. Where I think a lot of people can understand that our ancient medicines, Eastern medicine being part of that, really comes to that preserving and maintaining our longevity our health, taking care of ourselves in such a way, eating properly, taking proper formulas, doing proper movement so that we don't wait until we're in an emergency situation and then we have to act so quickly or it's a little bit hard to get ourselves back to health. So you would say, in other words, it's a lot more proactive than reactive, in other words. Yes. I think that's a beautiful um, way of putting it. Yeah. You know, I 
when I was a young kid, I was, you know, on a plethora of Western psychiatric medications. And yes. a lot of it had had adversive effects. And it wasn't until, you know, I saw someone who introduced the term called functional medicine, yes. which I had no clue what that meant. But philosophically, it was diametrically different than Western medicine because it sought to go to the root what was yes. going on instead of masking it or temporarily yes. having a fix. And I do believe that merger of East and West is great. We're able to go a lot deeper to the root um, instead of playing whack-a-mole where you might handle one thing, but then another thing, another thing, yes. you know, so I believe that's a beautiful concept. And I think you're seeing now, whether that's Western medicine or, you know, therapy that I do is the respect that is starting to infiltrate itself. I mean, Absolutely. for instance, when you go to a doctor, when I go to a doctor, he'll say, do you meditate? I go, I teach meditation classes. Does that count? He goes, no, do you meditate? I'm like, I, yes. yeah, yeah, a little bit too. So they're understanding the mind-body dichotomy, which is what you are all about. Yes, you know, that is so. exactly correct. And I love that. I love hearing any time. I could hear it a hundred times a day and it would make me happy hearing that Western medicine, Eastern medicine are coming together in that way. Because you're right, Jacob, 20 years ago when I talked about meditation, you know, or even herbs, people were like, okay, that's nice. <laughs> you know, but that's a little out there. I don't know if that works. And now here we are and it's the it's the hottest thing, but I don't think it's going to go anywhere because <laughs> it works. Just yeah. a short question, like, why do you feel there's been a shift of change philosophically for more of an openness amongst, you know, it's, for me, it's like heating up a large body of water. It takes a lot of time, but yes, how, how do you feel this shift has kind of happened? Like what factors contributed to now people buying into this stuff? Yeah. So, so given the nature of who you are, Jacob, and what you share on your platform and on this podcast... I, I think I'd like to start here. And I think that's why I even started answering the way that I did when you asked me the initial question of the Tao, the universe of yin and yang. You know, we can start to break that down or go to the very root of the, the concept or the principle, but ultimately yin and yang exists in our universe and in our life. And so, so this answer of how I deeply feel why we're at this kind of transitional time, I think is something, and I think you you were definitely alluding to that, if not making it very clear that this has been, you know, part of our universe and the shift of different energies and, and, you know, ways of going about things, if you will, as human beings on this earth, I think it's been in existence for, I, I could not even tell you how long, you know, I right. do believe that very fundamentally there is a shift happening in our universe. And I believe that's part of life. And I, I could sit down and try to think about this and it can blow my mind. And then I have to remind myself, Janelle, <laughs> just keep moving. You're here right now. And we have to to live. But I will say that I do think that the last couple of years in particular with, you know, I don't always love to bring it up, but we're all on the same page here that with COVID and that pandemic, I saw that make a huge change around the world in the way people paid attention to their health. Mm -hmm. Never have I seen in my lifetime, you know, a time where basically everyone was that concerned about their health and well-being and it was very uncertain and so everyone kind of had to reach a little deeper and whether depending on the spectrum of how much they cared or how much they wanted to take care of themselves or where they stood everyone paid attention to their health for a moment physically mentally spiritually i've never seen that before and isn't it doesn't it kind of make sense based on especially where we come from that sometimes it takes a very extreme, that's the yin and the yang, when one extreme hits, it naturally will start to balance. That's just the, what I believe and I am rooted in. Um, it's actually a place that I find a lot of comfort in and I feel that's where we're at right now. How long it's going to take, Jacob, I could not tell you. <laughs> you know, right, right, right. A lot of us are on the same page, but we can all feel in some sense, that there is a shift happening and that right. things are very extreme right now all over the world, particularly right in this moment, very extreme. And in these moments of being extreme, it's actually very overwhelming. And I think that during those times in particular is where human beings, no matter who you are, where you're from, what your beliefs are, you come down to look at and to you have to pay attention of how am I going to balance this within myself, mentally, mm -hmm. physically, spiritually. So I think there's a huge shift happening. And Absolutely. <laughs> More healing to need. It almost feels like the earth needs an entire acupuncture session yes. in itself. Well, I or, think that's what's happening. Or, you know? or, or yeah. exorcism in some situations. But Maybe yeah, both. You know. yeah. <laughs> but, Maybe. yeah. Yeah. Yes. Now, now you come, uh, as I mentioned earlier, from, is it nine generations of yes. herbologists? So nine. And I know your grandfather, I believe, was also a big doctor and he served in the Korean War too. So you come yes. from... A tremendous lineage. But for viewers who aren't sure about 
herbology. Could you maybe like explain a little bit about what it is and how you incorporate it? Is aromatherapy also under that umbrella? Like maybe yeah, clarify for, for my viewers herbology and how you incorporate this in your work and the rich lineage that it's, you know, been in your family for quite some time. Yes, I appreciate this question, Jacob. You see me smiling because like, okay, herbal medicine in a minute or yeah. two. Here we go. <laughs> I can do this. It's a good challenge. So the best way to understand herbal medicine, acupuncture, the movement that I teach, which remember I consider and everyone should, should consider medicine. That's proper techniques that have been handed down my lineage and other traditional lineages. They all work on vital energy, chi, and circulation, blood circulation within the body. So when I speak around the world, whether it is on beauty, on wellness, even moving into mental health, spiritual health, I always say it really comes down to a few very simple principles, right? And those are, we have to make sure that we are able to make our body function properly. So everything has to be functioning, working, right? Our organ systems, our muscles, our joints, our circulation, everything has to work. And furthermore, everything has to flow. Okay. And so when I teach, especially movement or speaking on skincare formulations, I say it no differently. So if we can picture our body, we can picture that circulation of blood flows through our body through our circulatory system. Well, vital energy or chi, which is huge in any kind of Eastern philosophy or medicine, right? And Ayurvedic as well, they call it something a bit different, but that exists. We have vital energy that also flows through our body in meridian system. So picture circulatory system, meridian system. There is set number of channels or meridians that run through our body, but that's where chi moves through. And so you can even look at going back down to that, how I started our whole conversation, the yin and yang that exists in our universe and in our body. You can even look at blood and chi, which is kind of the, the ultimate, you know, we need that to live where blood is yin and chi is yang. Yang is active. Yin is more substance. And so in our body, this is what exists. And so we have to make sure that everything is functioning and flowing properly because when everything flows properly, it is able to make everything function properly. And that's the best way to understand beauty, wellness, health, longevity. So when you incorporate herbs into your body, that's what they work on. There are so many different kinds of herbs. An encyclopedia of herbs, which is like right over there, <laughs> the Materia Medica is like the staple, right? Herbal medicine encyclopedia. And in that book, it'll have so many different herbs. And each of those herbs come from the earth in different forms, different climates. And ultimately, like when you go to study herbal medicine, you learn about those herbs, what, what organ systems they kind of focus on, if you will, what channels or meridians, like I just talked to you about, how what they move through and what they focus on. So that is how you kind of put together, and this is what I speak on too. It's one thing to understand each of the properties of those herbal ingredients, but it's a whole other thing. And that's what's been passed down in my lineage. I would highlight as being the most important piece is how to synergistically put those herbs together. And it's like a beautiful recipe. And that is what herbal medicine is. Because when you have have an imbalance or a condition, you can, you can, I don't want to say fix necessarily or treat, but you can start to rebalance that and make everything function properly by putting certain herbal ingredients together for mental imbalances, physical imbalances, you name it. In fact, herbs will even talk about certain spiritual imbalances. How very interesting, right? And so that's what herbal medicine is. It's a set of herbs with very powerful properties. Next up is synergistically putting them together in these perfect recipes, which is what, for example, has been passed on my lineage. Now we take these and they start to go through our body, making everything flow properly, hence making everything function properly. And that is way, one way of understanding how herbal medicine works. Acupuncture is on the same principle, but just using acupoints to do the same. So- there you so, go. <laughs> so, if you don't, so if you don't flow, you don't go, as they say. It's That's exactly really right. Yes. Flow, flow readiness, which, you know, is another segue to another topic that we'll talk Please, about with meditation. Course. But, yes. you know, when I listen to people like, you know, for instance, Dr. Daniel Lehman, who I follow very mm -hmm. closely, yes. um, he will speak about how brain health is mental health. Yes. But within the brain, it's vital to have flow. Yes. When people are feeling off, it's really usually a lack of flow that they're getting. And so could you speak to ways that people can maybe just quickly develop more brain flow? Uh, because I found at least personally through experimenting this, that I found when my brain is flowing, then I'm going, I, you know, I'm feeling yes. much better. So 100%. I don't know if there's any like neuroscientific 
uh, specifics or like quick practices that people could have to really develop that brain flow to relate to, you know, bodily flow too. Absolutely. That's the three pillars of medicine that I was talking about before, what I call the three M's, medicine, meditation, movement. So the beautiful thing is we kind of just covered a lot of that. Medicine is how we eat properly. Medicine is the supplements we take that a hundred percent proper formulations, proper mm. eating habits can very much make everything flow. Okay. Mm. Meditation movement can, they all go hand in hand. That's why they're the three pillars, but speaking specifically on meditation and movement, that is huge. And I, why I've started, I, I did not think I'd be teaching movement yet in my life, to be honest. I thought that would be later on because as, as I think I've, you know, communicated, there's a, there's a lot of different roles that I play, especially when it comes mm. to the formulation and the product side. But Right when I put out the Korean art, Myung Sung, the Korean art of living meditation, there is eight keys. And I say this because that is one way to make our mind work. I often speak on, you know, we, we pay a lot of attention to our physical training. We also have to think of the mind that way. We have to train our minds. It is a very East Asian, almost like samurai or martial arts way of thinking. And we don't have to, however it resonates, but we have to make our brains function in that manner, constantly training ourselves. So the meditation I speak of is living meditation. And there, I broke it down into eight keys, which is a way that we can structure the way we look at everything, expand our mind, gain perspective. That is a very powerful way of making sure that our brain is not stagnant and the movement. I, I do now have courses available, so I'm not leaving everyone hanging. Um, but what I teach is Myung Sung Moving Meditation that is based on Qigong. Okay. Qigong is one of the oldest forms of breath work. It is the oldest form, as far as I'm concerned, of any kind of breath work and any kind of exercise or movement as you know it. Mm -hmm. And those movements, especially the ones that have been passed on my lineage, can take about five minutes, five minutes to do. And as a working mom, you know, with a lot of things on my plate, you know, a lot of I am a human being like all of us right now, looking at the world and and there's a lot of overwhelm and a lot of challenges. I am hugely compelled, motivated to teach everyone, please do try to incorporate movement into our life. It is in form of meditation. And so that is the main thing I wish to share and teach right now, that by doing certain proper movements combined with our breath, making sure we are breathing properly, that alone can be so powerful yeah. for the health of our mind, our body, and our spirit. So that movement piece, it's a little different for Western culture because we're not as used to that internal movement, that internal practice of movement. But more and more that I share this with my own two eyes, I see people come in and, and truly, Jacob, in a matter of a couple of minutes, like I say, I practice this myself. When you feel overwhelmed, challenged, you feel a little stagnant, you feel down, you feel anxious, you do certain breath work and movements. And in a couple of minutes, you will feel better. I don't know how else to put it. So it's amazing. And, uh, and when I work with my clients, and I love everything you're saying because people Thank think you. that quantum changes require quantum steps. And that's yes. not the case. It's a small step that you need to take to have I that pivot that. to that reset. Um, and so if people could really practice this, they'll understand how pivotal it is. But there's yeah. a, a big cultural myth that we're programmed here in the West that beauty or truth or wisdom is in the hands outside yourself. And I love what yes. you do because mm -hmm. it's all the same message where there's etern internal, not eternal, but eternal too, internal yes, too. healing healing mechanisms right within yourself. And you don't have to travel thousands of miles away. Mm -hmm. You can, but you know, the body and the brain know really how to heal. It's really being able to go with the flow. And I'm not talking about progressive flow. That's another story, but flow, you know, yes, <laughs> the, the no, commercial, no. the commercial of flow, but a different kind of flow. But yes. um, yeah. But no, I absolutely I, love that. And I agree, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you, you have, you know, the wisdom of Jacob's ladder is about a lot of different rungs in the ladder to yes. awakening, to higher awareness. So you, you really, you know, dig on the ground, but you also go into the upper ethers in your studies. Could you speak yes. to a little bit about, you know, Eastern viewpoints? Um, we're going a little bit deeper here on the channel mm -hmm. towards um, anything from higher consciousness, past life, uh, re you know, reincarnation stuff. I wanted to kind of hear the Eastern viewpoint or maybe your viewpoints too about some of that stuff too. And uh, what's the philosophical orientation towards yes. you know, higher consciousness? Absolutely. So 
I will speak on my my personal experience, which I don't often do, but I think that that's a good 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 way to enter this conversation. I like that because yeah. maybe what because I don't want to I can't fit it into any particular box to be honest. Mm-hmm. Because when I really look at how I was raised, my mentor, and that's where I'm going to start. Mm-hmm now that he's no longer here and this is my father I'm speaking of, you know, without him being here to physically ask him questions as I had had the ability to for many years, I'm realizing that it really was very principle based. And what I, what I mean by that is I am very, feel very connected. I cannot live without my faith. I cannot live without that connection to a higher power, to God. You know, I do find, I'm just going to really jump in right now, Jacob. <laughs> I look I'm, good. I'm on a lot of different interviews and podcasts, but we don't always talk about this, right? This we, I only <laughs> love deep dive, really. I'm not, I've never been a shallow guy. I'm a little yes. superficial and uh, hey, listen, sometimes vain, but you know, I, spiritually, I'm very deep, you know? I see that. I see yeah. that, you know? And, and so I will say that, you know, what I feel compelled to say in this moment with you and with our community, I never understood. I still don't understand. I think for my entire life on this earth, hopefully hopefully that won't be actually. I take that back. I never understand why we focus so much on all the differences, right? We're all human. And that is what my mentor, my teacher, my father was my greatest mentor and teacher. And I'll tell you how he learned in a second, much different than how I learned, you know, we always under I have always come to understand that we're all human. Thousands of years ago, we were human. Hopefully, thousands of years from now, we're all human. Regardless of our age, our gender, our ethnicity, our political beliefs, our religious beliefs, there's so much of this happening right now. Of course, we all have differences in uniqueness. I'm not saying that. But at the end of the day, we're all connected. We're all human. And at the end of the day, if we choose a certain path of religion, let's go there. I'm certainly not going to go into a discussion of different ones, but if we choose a path, I am all for that. I am completely in support of that. Choose a path. You you connect your heart and your mind on that. You have certain traditions and rituals and ways of going about our life that are very important in my personal life and in my family that help us to consistently connect, to consistently consistently purify ourselves because we are on this earth. And no matter how many good things that we do, the mere nature of us being human, right, which I said before, yin and yang, means we're constantly purifying with good, negative thoughts, negative physical, all of the things. We have to purify ourselves. We have to connect. And so the way that I was raised was by my father and my mother, of course. My father learned in the mountains of East Asia. I share this wow. in my book with a master. It's like from a movie, Jacob. This is my own father. And I will tell you, it is like from a movie from the age mm-hmm. of seven to 14. Now it's not uncommon in Asia, in East Asia, especially, you know, a couple generations ago. Uh, mm-hmm. And for my father too, to go to the mountains of East Asia and study. And his master is Master Borian. And that is what I show. And so he went to the mountains to study martial arts, medicine, movement, exactly what I said before, right? The three pillars. Also, he went in his studies, he he really studied and connected in such a way that he really did wish to achieve and was able to achieve certain levels of awakening or enlightenment, right? This is not something that we talk about all the time in Western culture. There's many people who do, even in our meditation daily life here, no matter where you are, part of why we do this is to purify ourselves and connect in such a way that we can start to become higher conscious, uh, connect to higher consciousness. Ourselves increase our vibration and our frequency equals our chi. And so when it comes to un- this understanding, getting back to that, that is very important for me to share. And I find ever since I was little that whether we're talking about Buddhism, whether we're talking about Christianity, whether we're talking about is uh, Judaism. I always, for some reason in my life, saw that we all are talking about a God. We all are talking, or a higher mm-hmm. power, right? We're all talking about being human. We're all talking about a certain uh, code of ethics and morals and values that just help us to be kind and connected to each other and to the universe. And I think that that is one of the most important things that all of us right now need to focus on. And that's why I said, I don't think I've ever said it so strong in this manner, mm-hmm. but I think it is vital. It is vital for us all to do this, to find something greater than us that we connect to, to me, thinking of past lives or actually more than even thinking of where I came from before, because I do believe in past lives. That's the truth. And I do believe that it has come into this life in different ways. In my role of who I am on this earth right now, I don't overanalyze what that is. For some, that's important. For me, I know the things that that are important to me that resonate. I believe I have a certain duty and role here, uh, as you, as you, I think, saw in me right away. And I also, what I meant by I don't think so much about the past lives in particular, 
I feel incredibly connected, but almost I, 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 I tend to think about when I leave this earth, what am I leaving behind? I believe that life continues. Now, whether we want to call that heaven, whether we want to call that another, another life, whether we want to call that another planet, at the end of the day, in some way, I wonder if, if others would agree. I have a feeling they would. We're all talking about the same principle. And so that connection, that cycle of life, but that connection throughout time here on earth, you know, our lifetime here, it just, it's unending and it's limitless. And so I believe that that is exactly in this moment in time, we're all here. I believe it's not an accident that you and I are having this conversation. I believe it is not an accident that whoever's listening, there's a reason why you're sitting there listening right now. So whether we want to call that karma, whether we want to call that past lives, whether that leads us into what we do on this earth right now, I think that is all incredibly important, and that's how it connects to me in my personal life. And one of the things that was very important to my father, and it's interesting because he made a huge shift in – I have not really – ever put it this way, but he made a huge shift in what how it was even handed down in our lineage. He studies in the mountains of East Asia, hmm. a Korean man who then decided to come down from the mountain, as he used to even share with me, I don't know if I, I want to go back up to the mountain. <laughs> in some ways, living on a mountain and learning to survive, like literally wild animals and food and, hmm. and all the things you could, we can just imagine, in some way is more peaceful than coming down to society and living it in all the things that we are surrounded by right now. But he had chosen that it was his destiny and he went with that, okay, to come down and bring it to society and then furthermore move, move to the West and then from there marry my mom who's blonde hair, brown eyes. <laughs> I mean, hmm. that's not common. Common, right, and here I am, you know, one of his children, um, and 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 yes, taking it upon myself to continue in this lineage. So, so that is how it's connected in my personal life, and what I really hope to share and and do my very best to exemplify that we can we can connect it all. I I think it's very important too, and what we do with that. And yeah. I suppose in conclusion of this answer, you know, and it's in my book very important to me is what we leave behind. You know, I, I say one day, maybe no one will remember my face. Maybe one day no one will remember my name, but I do wish that on the day I leave this earth, I will have left something good behind for, for all of those to come, including my own two boys, you know? So. Uh, I know without a doubt, the ripple effect is, is very, very strong already, you know, Thank but you, you unpacked a lot, but I love yes, what you did. did. Where, where, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Where, where you very much spoke, I think a big emphasis on any interview that I do is to keep it organic, but to keep it present, you know, and I think you really spoke to, without getting to specifics, a lot of what's happening now, um, where people really need to remember, yeah. you know, that we come in this world a spirit, not a religion. And we'll, yes. you know, we'll cross over that way. And if a religion helps you to get to that spirit part, great. If it's divisive, it's really, you know, it's yes. not a religion, it's divisive. So yes. um, I, I that. love that you really spoke to that because um, a big emphasis of my teachings um, is really remembering who you are. Yes. And I think your father and others have you know, gone to great extremes to remember who they are. And sometimes yes. it's about losing yourself in order to find yourself. Mm -hmm. And I, th I think for viewers, it's important that to understand the vantage point that they're looking at, you know, if you're looking outside yourself, you're going to be a leaf in water, but if you turn inward, you're going to generate a whole current, like people like, like yourself. So I think that um, direction that people are facing in their life and where reality comes from is so important. Yes. Uh, many people have this world creating their mind instead of their beautiful mind creating the world. And that's yes. the problem. Yes. <laughs> and we're going to continue. We've been here how many thousands of years and we're still yes. doing the same primitive uh, pivots and patterns. But I think there's a larger shift of people who have really changed, but we need, we need more. Um, I certainly know our work has a lot of crossover and yes. the work that I do working in the field of mental health. Uh, but could you speak a little bit about the synergy of your work relating to mental health, particularly a strong area that I work closely to with grief? Um, I don't, uh, could you mm -hmm. maybe speak to a little bit about your professional and personal uh, uh, points to really make on those areas and how the synergistic ties with your Eastern viewpoints, as well as, you know, mental health, as well as grief, which is something that's universal as, as is mental health. Yes, absolutely. Um, yes. As, um, 
Losing those that I love has unfortunately, or part of life, I don't even want to put that word, so I'll take it back, mm-hmm. um, has been has been a part of my life. Having lost my father almost eight years ago now, coming up on February 14th, was the worst moment of my entire life. And that is just the truth. And I have found actually that, you know, sometimes it's okay to say it like that. In fact, I I, I encourage people that sometimes it's important, especially for those of us who do feel compelled and keep moving and kind of bulldozing through sometimes, right? That it's important sometimes to stop and just say, you know what, that was the worst. So Tell it like I, it I don't is. know if this yeah. is what you're looking for, but I want to give an actual, like practical, tangible practice for people who might be going through this right now. Sometimes you connect it with your breath, you breathe in, you're out, and you say out loud, that's the worst. Like this is really hurting my heart. And and grief is something that is is unexplainable when for any of us who have walked through it. Um, I lost my father very unexpectedly perfectly in good health and then not here anymore. And I was there with him when it happened. And so, you know, even thinking back, which of course I will never forget in this entire life, you know, just what even led to me being there in those moments, you know, it's, it's a very, it's one of those profound moments of my life where you really see the universe and how it pieces together certain pieces of the puzzle. And, and there's a a deep reason for all of that. Right. And so when, uh, in my personal, but of course this connects to my professional and all the practices that I study, I could not live without them. That is the truth. When I speak on the 3M, sometimes people say, wow, Dr. Kim Janelle, you're so passionate about this. And I feel like being like, because without them, I could not, I couldn't survive. I I, I could, uh, I suppose, but, but I really mean that, you know, especially during the, the hardest times in life, like losing someone that you love so much. And in those moments, boy, did I root myself there's no better word that I can think of at the moment, and, and I choose words carefully, but boy, did I root myself in the understanding of past lives, in the understanding of faith. And it doesn't mean you have to you have to understand or believe in past lives, but really rooted myself in my faith, in my connection, because that is the only way that I was able to, for myself and for my family. I'm the oldest daughter. You know, I was beyond close to my mom or a very, very close knit family, but I had to pick it up and I knew that and it was a choice. And so the way that I was able to pick myself up as quickly as possible was in that faith. I believe that I feel I was very close to my father, very, very close to him. I feel that in some ways I'm closer to him now than than even when he was physically here. And it is something that constantly I I am connected to him. And it's a constant – and whatever that – you know, I wish I could have words too. And I really appreciate these questions and these moments of reflection because it makes me think about them in this way because I would love to be able to communicate this to anyone that is helpful. But I know he's always there. I talk to him. In fact, even when he passed, uh, I remember one of the, the ways that I finally was able to kind of get myself to the next level somewhat quickly so I could be there for the people that needed me, and that's the truth, was to know and trust. I remember sitting – very late one night, if I even slept, watching the hardship that my family was going through, that I that I personally was feeling. And I remember saying out loud, Jacob, I don't know if I've ever shared this with anyone, but saying out loud, and I was speaking to God, God, I know that there is a reason behind all of this. I trust in you and have faith in you completely. And I know who my father was as a human being, as a spirit in this life, one of the most, if not the most compassionate person I have ever personally known uh, what he did for just passing on all of these things to make people happier and more peaceful and calm. Um, And so I remember saying, you know, daddy, God, I know that there's a reason behind why this happened. And I completely, like you said, make yourself zero. That's very East Asian, right? That's like the ENSO circle. The zero point. The zero point. The second you let go is the second you connect. And I do believe that that when I did that, there was a huge shift that happened. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that I don't have sadness, you know, and it comes in funny ways. Um, So, and when it happens... I get it. I tell myself, you know, yeah, of course. And I, t- I talk to my father too at times. I think my whole life, I'm going to miss you so much. Like, this is horrible. <laughs> this yeah. is not the way we wanted it, <laughs> we think, you know. Um, so it's just that that connecting to something higher than us, that, that faith and belief that I will be with him again in some way, spirit, shape, form, and knowing that he is always there with me, always watching over me. Um, I've had other family members pass um, you know, uh, very people close to me and my family, same thing. It's just, and, and without that understanding that we will one day be together again, 
I, I don't know. I don't know how I would have gotten through it personally. So I think that's very vital, you know, and also what we do here directly affects them. That's a huge part of my life that I don't know if people talk about very often, but that's something I was raised with, you know, whether it's our traditions that we have and our culture, we just went through when the harvest moon Chosak, mm -hmm. which is where you have ancestors day and you connect in that way and you prepare food for them. I mean, there's so many different things we can do, but I always believe that everything I do on this earth is going to directly affect so hopefully so many people in a positive way, but will directly affect my boys. And I raise them this way too. And everything I'm doing right now directly even affects my father and all the things he's, it never ends that connection. Mm. And when you, and I suppose in conclusion, that is something that I also feel very strong to share is that that connection is something so vital and it makes it so that we're never alone. So like those who I feel like when we have very heavy hearts or feel very isolated and alone, if we can find a way to remember and ultimately to feel that we're always connected. We're connected to those who came before us. We're connected to those who come after us. We are connected right now. We're never alone. Like what a beautiful thing in some ways, no matter how much hardship or pain, you're never alone. So there's that. Wow. Mic drop. <laughs> Mic drop. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I love that because, you know, when I, you know, I'm in the field and, you know, a lot of people, they believe in bypassing moments and there's a great emphasis on just positive moving forward and i think all that is well and good but therapy we really believe in the wound we believe the wound as as real and going there and being able to acknowledge uh, what is and working with it and how we relate to that wound is often how we relate to someone else that comes in our way yes. when someone's going through a tough day right if we don't know how to relate to ourselves how can we relate to other persons so it's that self-compassion the self-empathy uh, but also just allowing ourselves, you know, this is across the board, just to be in flow, you know, yeah. emotion, energy, emotion, it's just has to run its course. And, yes. you know, eventually it seemed like what you're saying, where you were able to transform uh, that great pain, you know, to a part of the, you know, continual awareness and it's fueled more of your purpose. And I'm sure your yes. work has taken off in a sense at a certain point uh, from that. But I think sometimes we just, uh, think that our loved one has passed, but we keep them alive with, um, you know, not having their lives in vain to continue their legacy in our own unique ways, whether that's rituals or the work that you yeah. do today. You know, that's how we keep them going is, you know, just really keeping their their life and their energy within our own lives. Yes, and, uh, absolutely. Yeah. I had a grandfather that I, you know, and I used to speak about my near-death experience too, and he would just roll his eyes, whatever. He wasn't into this stuff. We look exactly alike, ironically. But uh, he'd always used to say, I'm better look. No, but, you know, yes, <laughs> but, but you'd add that to me. Yes. If you look at a picture of him in black and white and me, it's like, it's crazy. Yes. But he always used to say, I don't believe in any of that afterlife nonsense. But I do believe is a part of me is forever in you. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, internally connects us. And since that point, he's come through in readings and say, geez, I, yes. I am a believer now. I know now. <laughs> but that, that part that is too. true. Where, But our lives have to be the undeniable imprint that that loved one was a part of our lives. And we do that yes. through incorporating their legacy. You know, that's yes. how they continue. Yeah. Yes, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's very important to me, like I, I briefly mentioned in my personal life, that I share that with my boys. I have a 10-year-old and a six-year-old. Interestingly, my oldest was two and a half when my father passed. Oh, and wow. so it has been a huge part of their life that I did not necessarily grow up with, you know, uh, that understanding of death and life and that cycle. And so they have a very unique experience, uh, even different than my own in a, in a much, uh, I, I don't want to put a word on it, but, but different than my own, I'll say there, where this was all part of my general understanding of life, the way I was raised, but they are actually like, because they see me with my, with my father. And it's a funny thing to say, but they see how connected I am, how I, he's such a part of our lives and how I, you know, in that manner. And so in some way, they're learning that in a whole different way too. And it makes me want to share that with people. You know what I mean? Uh, obviously, each of us have our own choice of how we wish to move through this life. But I have found that is a really interesting, they're, they're even we talk about someday when I'm not around, which makes sense, right? Because because they watch with my father, and we have conversations about that, which can seem a little daunting, to be honest, even myself. And even in moments where I feel kind of like, ooh, I don't know if I want to talk about this, I have to break that. Say yes, yes, Jackson, Vince, you're right. And one day when mommy is not here, I am still here. You know what a beautiful thing to to incorporate that into into the younger yeah. younger age as well. So 
I, that's I beautiful. I mean, I work closely with a lot of grief organizations, whether that's yes. parents who have lost kids or right. you know yes. family members. And you know, many times these grief groups they don't incorporate or allow talk of the afterlife stuff. So specific groups, you know, that I work closely with, like the Forever Family Foundation or, or help, mm. Helping Parents Heal, yes. they allow talks about the afterlife. They bring in near-death experiencers like myself or evidential mm. mediums. But, you know, the research has really pointed to the notion that belief works very well with grief. Now, not to get too Western, it doesn't immunize yeah. you from your feelings of grief or stuff like that. But having a box where it is a possibility that your loved one continues or like yourself to have a continual dynamic with yes. that loved one, you know, allows people to process their grief. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, we're away, it just doesn't wreck us. We're able to persevere. Yes. Um, so, so beautiful. Um, you're someone who really walks the talk and you yeah. practice what you preach. Is that a feel for your work? Because it seems when you talk about your work, you have so much excitement. You're just a lightning rod <laughs> of joy and excitement. Is it part of it because you don't just study this outside of yourself, but you live it and it's just like a part of you and you just want to like share it with like everyone and just kind of yes. shake them and just say, this works. Is that a part of your fuel, you would say? Yes, actually, Jacob, no one said it in that way. And a hundred percent, you know, it is very important to me. Let it, let it be known that I practice what I preach has always been very important to me and it will continue to be. Um, so, so that principle in and of itself, but also, yes, I, I could not, like, I, I think I even mentioned before, I don't know, I, I could live maybe, but not live fully and not live in a place of calm and happiness and purpose without these practices. So yes, I feel this passionate and I really wish to share this with people because I do believe how fortunate am I, I don't know if that's the perfect word, but how fortunate am I that in this life I was given so many tools that have been that have been handed down in my lineage that I feel very compelled to share that as much as possible with as many as possible. So if it is helpful, then amazing, you know. And so, so yes, I love that. I definitely, definitely, it's important to me to practice what I preach, and I could not live without them. <laughs> my, my my grandfather's smiling because he ran a tool business. Not that oh. he wasn't tool. Oh, I love he that. ran a tool yeah. business, and you're like a walking <laughs> Home Depot. I mean, times <laughs> a thousand. You have like I was. I had to like when I read your um, bio, it was like reading a J.K. Rowling book. It was just so <laughs> extensive with your background of information. Oh my gosh, that's but but yeah. more importantly, I think it comes from a great place where everyone's in a unique phase. We're all facing a similar storm, yes. but everyone's in a unique boat, and you're trying to really understand that if anyone has a, a brain or a body, they could really benefit from your book and your work. And there's so many different mm -hmm. ways to reach people through this eclectic, broad-based uh, toolbox that you have yes. and you're continuing uh, to, to evolve. Uh, mm -hmm. One of my final questions, you know, really is a big tenant of, you know, my work, you know, as a, as a social worker and therapist, which is resilience and resolve. Yes. Um, you know, people right now, they're many times are spinning. They just you know, they yes. feel like they're drowning and they're looking for something to hold on to, but they don't really have anything to hold on to. And so that could lead to self, you know, destructive behaviors. Could you speak to a little bit of tools that you could recommend for people who are really scuffling from mental health, physical health, the beyond, or just, you know, a couple like tools. I know there's an acronym, the three, the three M's, I believe, but yes. um, is there like, like, like any words that you could speak to? Uh, this moment that people are feeling that could be very real and visceral on a collective or micro basis. Yes, absolutely. Well, yes. So let me, the three M's are very important. That's literally what has been handed down for thousands of years as tools to be able to help us. It's ancient medicine for daily life. And I, and that, and I like pause when I say that, because let's understand what I really wish to get across. All these words are words and I hope they're helpful. But at the end of the day, these tools literally have been, have been working for thousands of years for people in any kind of challenging or non-challenging great moments. You practice them all the time to be able to center ourselves, to be able to be present and connected. Because remember we talk, I talk, you've heard me talk a lot about connection with the universe, but it's always within ourself. It has to start there. And you said that before too, Jacob. If we keep looking for things outside all the time, which of course I, I encourage, you know, find your doctors, your practitioners, your teachers, you know, 
absolutely with that support. But at the end of the day, it has to come from inside. Everything comes from in you. Mm-hmm. My book, Young Sung, The Korean Art of Living in Meditation, those eight keys, the first key is know your true self, which is an entire lifetime. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't expect to have a call. Like, I did it, I did it, Dr. Kim. I know myself. No. But we must remember that it comes, all the answers, everything we're looking for really comes from in our, inside of ourselves and we have mm-hmm. to be connected. And so to the three M's are little tools, practices that we can incorporate into our life to help us when we do feel overwhelmed, when we feel really down, when we feel depressed, anxious, whatever that might be. Or on the kind of the business side of things, before I walk into a big boardroom, I practice certain techniques. And that's where I was saying before, of course, I'm a huge proponent of medicine and eating properly and all of that, but there are movements that you can do that take a couple of minutes, five minutes. And I have started to put these on my website. I share a bit on Instagram, little things, even simple breath work, breathing in. It sounds so interesting and we hear this all the time, but no matter how many events I do, there's always numerous people who are not aware of this yet. One of the most important things we can do, no matter where we are or what we are feeling, whether it is tension with another person or we're just feeling really off, whatever that might mean to you, mm-hmm. is you breathe in through your nose. I call it the five, five, five method. Okay. So I'm literally giving a tool because I like that. <laughs> Let's give something right now that can help people. No matter where you are, you can do it anywhere. You breathe the five, in through five, your five nose. Deal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Myung Sung five, five, five method. You breathe in for five seconds through your nose. You hold it, all your breath for five seconds. Then you exhale through your mouth for five seconds. And actually you hold that as well for five seconds. And you can do this five times. So that five, five, five is inhale five times, hold. Exhale five counts, hold for five and do that five times. And that's a matter of seconds, maybe a minute or so. I don't know. I didn't do the math, but you get it. It's very quick. And by doing that, I promise you, you will feel a difference. You will feel more grounded. You will form, feel more connected for those who experience anxiety and panic. You do this and you can actually picture what it does is what I talked about before, your chi, your vital energy, everything starts to ground. You become more rooted. And when you're more rooted, you can think more clearly, you can feel better. And those are things that we can incorporate. And then there are movements that I teach that, like I said, I'm finally putting them up as as very quick courses. And I'm doing that purposefully. Like I will definitely offer some courses that are hour long, but there's something that I really wish to share. And I tell people whenever I do events, it's 15, maybe 30 minutes maximum because I really wish for people to incorporate this and it will help you. It will help you mentally. It will help you physically. It'll help you spiritually to connect first your own mind, body, spirit. Mm -hmm. And when we're able to keep that connection, kind of maintain it, as you said before, then we'll be that much better at connecting with others and to the circumstances we find ourselves in. So I hope that that's helpful. I, I know it will be. And it's so pivotal how information informs belief, which informs our behavior. Yes. And you're giving a lot of cutting edge information, which hopefully people will practice, which will become a part of their habitual behaviors. Yes. And that will create uh, you know, a way to move the needle of people's lives. And yes. I love that you emphasize the breath because that started me on my journey when I suffocated due to whipping cough at the age of three. Mm-hmm. I had my near-death experience and my physical breath was taken. But then yes. all of a sudden, I was able to surrender to the breath of eternity, which we all are mm-hmm. created from. And yes. that saved my life. And I love what you're saying, because the breath, life is breath, you know, here over yes. there, it's an eternal breath. And we're able to deepen that breath. You're able to really connect to whatever you call it, your creator, the inner, the higher conscious, whatever that is. But there's a physical breath, but that really is connected to an upper spiritual breath. And it recharges, revitalizes your whole life. So Yes. Uh, I couldn't agree with that more, and, and I thank you. Uh, Dr. Mm-hmm. Kim, before we go, um, where's the best way that people could find your incredible book, Myung Sung? Um, is it uh, on your website, Amazon? And if people want to follow you, uh, yes. is there a website? And I personally love following your IG. You have thank amazing you, videos you. that I always brighten my day. So tell us the best oh, way for people to that. locate all things Dr. Janelle Kim. Absolutely, Jacob. Thank you for that, first of all. Uh, You can definitely find me at JanelleKim.com. That's J-E-N-E-L-L-E, Kim.com. That's my website where you can find my different platforms. I I really do try to uh, focus on Instagram because it's a place that I 
can go and engage. I've learned to embrace it. It's not always so easy, <laughs> but, but it's a place that I can stay connected in this way and, and give bits of everything I possibly can, tools, hopefully, um, that can help us. So Instagram is Dr. Janelle Kim, Facebook, LinkedIn, you name it, all those social platforms. And my book, Young Sung, The Korean Art of Living Meditation. It can be found really at any bookstore. It's on the Penguin Random House website. Certainly Amazon is a very simple yeah. way of buying it. That, And, you know, I never really mention, and then people always ask me, so for what it's worth, I have an audible version as well where I wow. speak it myself. And so I have found that people have really enjoyed that as well for those who are a little more auditory. Um, so, yes. So definitely please stay connected to me if anyone has any questions or you know, whatever that looks like. And I'm, I'm paying that much more attention. I'd like to start building YouTube with some pretty interesting, you'll see, series on, on speaking to people such as yourself, Jacob. So I'd love to have you on there. So uh, people that, really understand, you know. That'd be my honor. You know, Dr. Janelle yeah. Kim, you're someone who really, I know there's so many people behind you that are so proud mm -hmm. of your work, who have come before you. You're, you walk the talk and it really is... Um, about the roots, you know, you yes, have yes. really stuck to your roots and you've really incorporated that, which will help others to really take ownership of their own roots and to recognize that it's all in your own backyard. You yes. have the tools, you have the capacity and just start to explore what's there and not to be afraid of doing something a little bit unique, a little bit different, yes. but uh, that's going to be something that's effective. And if uh, if if there's a biggest insult that anyone could have, it it could be that saying someone is normal, which really means we're just following the herd. You know, yes. the people that make it that make an impact are the oddballs like myself mm -hmm. or whoever, and <laughs> those are the ones that are making the changes. And uh, you're I someone agree. who's certainly making a ripple effect. So thank you for your, your mm -hmm. generous time and your pearls of wisdom. You're welcome mm -hmm. back at any point in time, and you, you're a, you're a true alpha and powerhouse, and someone that I'm just inspired mm -hmm. to know. So thank you. <laughs> really appreciate you. Thank you so much for our time together today and, and for having me. Well, thank you. That was a wonderful conversation with Dr. Kim. I learned so much. I mean, she is such a powerhouse. First of all, she has so much wealth of information, experience, training, as well as incredible heritage and uh, family history that she comes from. And uh, it was just such a wonderful conversation. And there are so many different avenues that we ventured down. But I know anyone listening got something from this conversation. And I'd recommend really listening to it again and again, because there's so much beautiful information for mental health, physical health, you know, different Eastern philosophies and practices. It was a great, great interview that I will never forget. And so I'd like you to thank you for tuning into this conversation. Make sure you keep on coming back onto the channel. We'll see you here next week on the Wisdom of Jacob's Ladder. Thank you.